Making your own sketchbooks is really enjoyable because not only does it put you totally in charge, you can choose how many pages, you can choose the size of your paper, you can choose the type of your paper. It's actually really straightforward and I've selected four different designs that you can make with things that you should have lying around the house. I'm going to show you how to make one just with binders. I'm going to show you two different types of concertina sketchbooks and what's called a perfect bound book. So my name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me about ages ago. And this week it's the second in my sketchbook series all about a concertina sketchbook. So just before we start making um, our concertina sketchbook, I just thought I'd show you one that I've already uh, started using and show why I think this is such a nice book to use. And it's because it helps you tell a story. We were staying um, on holiday down in this lovely terrace, Georgian Terrace, and I started sketching the houses to build up a story of the week and then it's also very flexible so if we look at this one which was down in Sidmouth same week on holiday you can draw on one page or you can spread out over several depending what you're drawing so this is a commercial sketchbook made by C White. your own is super easy I showed you in my first film making this concertina book and this, in this film, I want to show you a slightly different design which actually has little pockets built into it that you could keep whatever it is in there if you're out sketching your train ticket home. So this concertina sketchbook is made from one single sheet of paper and we fold it into however many pieces we want, say like this if I did three and, and four we'll have 12 pages in this and then we cut it so that we end up with one long piece of paper fold it put the covers on and that's our sketchbook now if we want a few more pages we could do i don't know 16 and the process would be just the same we'll fold it then we cut it like this and we end up with one long piece of paper that we fold and put the covers on so what do you need to make this book well you need the paper that's going to go inside i'm going to use cartridge paper for this demonstration you could use watercolor paper pastel paper whatever your favorite paper is then you need something for the cover we're going to make a hardback cover so you might need something like an off cut of mount board or what's called gray board we'll come on to this so don't worry about it the back of an old sketchbook would be fine the cover off an old encyclopedia just something hard we also need glue and something to put it on with ideally um, your glue should be acid free. Look for an acid free PVA glue. If it's not acid free, it's not the end of the world because are you expecting the sketchbook to be around in 100 years time? Don't know. Anyway, that's what you should have. You might find a little glue stick quite handy just for touching things up as well. Obviously you need an area to work. We're working with a big piece of paper, so give yourself some space. We need newspaper to stop the glue going everywhere and then this stuff is really useful and it's actually the inside of a cereal packet. It's non-stick paper and it will stop your cover sticking to I don't know, the pages or whatever. So inside of a cereal packet obviously clean it off, get rid of your shreddies and that's really handy. We need a ruler, pencil, um, 
and something sharp to cut with. Uh, you could, of course, use scissors. You could use like a little sharp knife. And then we also need something to smooth down all the folds we're going to be making. And you could literally use the handle of a, of a knife, handle of your scissors, or if you have one, you can use a bone folder, which is what bookbinders actually usually use. And that, I think, is it. So we should get going. The slight downside of this particular accordion fold um, sketchbook is that it can only be as big as one sheet of paper. In other styles, you can stick sheets of paper together and make bigger books, but this one is restrained by the size of the paper. So I've got an A1 piece of cartridge paper here. If you want lots of pages, the pages will have to be smaller. If you want fewer pages, they can be bigger, but we are restricted by this. So what I'm going to do is fold it in three and then fold it into six and I will have 18 pages. I start by measuring the short side of my paper and mine is 59 and a half. I know I want to divide it into three. So 59 and a half divided by three is just under 20. So I'm going to mark 19 and three quarters. I'm going to mark in a few places 19 and three quarters. Sorry, just so you can see there, so that that will help me get a nice neat fold. That's my mark. And I'm going to bring the bottom edge up so that it's in line with those marks and then fold along. Now at this point you need your bone folder and you run it along the edge to get a really sharp fold. As I say you could totally use the handles of scissors or the end of a knife. The principle is I mean, you could use your thumbnail, but you'll probably get a sore thumb with the amount of folding we've got to do. We just want that fold to be super sharp. We're then going to open our paper out and we are going to bring the top edge down to that fold. And again, the more precise you are with your folding and your lining up, the better the end book will be. So I've folded it roughly and then, well, this time I'll, I'll use my knife just to get a nice sharp edge. So there you go. I've folded my paper into three. Obviously, if you were doing it into four, you could fold it in half and then bring the edges into the middle. It would actually be easier. But that's my three. OK, now I need to fold it into six lengthways. So first of all, I'm going to line up the corners and fold it in half. Fold those together and I've got that edge. And again, just go along, sharpen it all up. I now need to fold each half into three. So a bit more measurement to do. How long is that half? Well, it's 42 handily oh that is useful 42 divided by 3 is 14 if I've got that right do check your measurements because it's one of those things that you should really measure it twice and cut it once they say so then I'm bringing in that edge and just Lining it up before folding it. And I've got one fold there. Oh, I can fold this back on itself. It doesn't matter which way you fold it at the moment because we just want these to be in the right place. Just check I'm doing that right. There we go. And you can see that I've folded this half 
into to nine pieces. I'm going to turn it round to make it easier to deal with and do exactly the same on the other side. So here's my piece of paper and I've got it folded into 18 bits because that's what I decided I wanted to do. So we need to lie it flat and just make sure we've got our head round where we're going to cut it. And you remember we want a long piece of joined up paper. We're not cutting it into strips. If you're not sure are you, and you're getting confused, do mark where you're going to cut it. I'm going to cut it all the way here to the last fold before the end. Then I'm going to start from the other end, cut it all the way here to the last fold at the end and I will end up with one long strip of paper. There are different ways you can cut it. You could just use scissors, you could use a sharp knife on a cutting mat, or this is called a slitting knife, which is used by bookbinders. Uh, it's, it's quite sharp, sharp enough to cut paper, um, but certainly isn't like a, a scalpel. So if I've done this right, and I believe I have, I will have one long piece of paper. And now we can start to fold it backwards and forwards on itself. Now it's fairly obvious on the first where to go, but when you get to the end and you've got the double sheet, fold down and then carry on folding backwards and forwards. We come to the end, we can fold down, backwards and forwards. And we have turned one sheet of paper into a concertina. What we need to decide is what we're going to do with those double pages. You could leave them like that in, in your sketchbook and actually open out and, and do sort of either a very wide picture or, or a long thin picture. What I like to do is actually turn them into pockets because I say when you're out and about you might have a train ticket, your business card, I don't know, what else? whatever. So it's quite fun to turn those into pockets. And on this one, I have got two. Okay, so if we're going to turn this into pockets, let's find them first. So that's one of those double pages. And let's just find the other. And that's the other one. And can you see one opens at the top and one opens at the bottom? So I like to turn them into side pockets. So to do that, we need to stick round the two open sides. But to get things in and out a little bit more easily, I cut out a, a little V. And I'm going to cut basically that shape. And that will make it easier for me to get things in and out. I then open it. I'm going to use my glue stick. You could, of course, just use a brush and PVA, put it back, press it down and I've made a little pocket envelope there once it's dried. I'm just cutting this by eye. You could and probably should cut it a little bit more accurately. cut half and then turn it round to make sure it matches. That would be one way. And again, I just need to open it out, put glue round that edge and that edge and then stick it down. And this is called your book block. So now it's time for the cover on this one I did before. Just want to show that it should be slightly larger all the way round than your paper because then the cover is what gets uh, bashed about, not the paper inside. The easiest way of getting a nice cover is maybe to use some um, old mount board you can get off cut. Framer is likely to give them to you because they only just throw them away. So you could cut two pieces 
of mount board to the size you want, slightly larger than your book block, and then stick those on. Or you can use this, which is called grey board because it's board and a grey. And it's very cheap to buy. Or indeed, you could just rip the back off an old sketchbook that you finished. And you can cut this to size, cover it with a decorative uh, paper, and then use that as your, your cover. So cut your cover to the size you need it. Remember putting that little bit of extra on. And then select whatever paper you want. Now this is scrapbooking paper, so it's quite nice and firm. You'll find if it's too thin, it'll go wrinkly once the, uh, the glue's on it. What I've done is drawn around the cover, put a little bit extra at the side. What's that? Two, three centimetres, two and a half centimetres. And then I've mitered the corners, but not right up to the edges. I want a little bit because I want all that board covered. What I could do if I wanted to, to make the folding a little bit easier, I could use just score round on the paper. I say that's optional, but it can make folding just a little bit easier if you want to. I'm now going to glue right up to the edges. We need to keep that steady because what I don't want to do is get glue on the front of this paper. Carefully picking that up and getting a clean sheet, popping it down and then placing my board in, in place. Now starting with a short end, I'm going to fold that over. And then with my thumbnail, I'm just going to nip that in the edge there. Do exactly the same at the bottom. Fold it over, nip it in, nip it in there. I then can come round to the long edge and fold that over. And you can see that the corners are all nice and neat and covered. No, none of that ugly old grey board is showing. Just do the same. And there, I've got one cover. Obviously, if there's a particular pattern, make sure you centre it. I didn't need to with that. And there are my set of covers. So that's really easy. What we now need to do is find more of that clear, non-stick, cereal packet, cover them, weight them down and let them dry really thoroughly so that they don't warp. Get your book block and then just double check everything before you stick it so that that is the right size and goes there. Then we come to our little envelope. Yep, it goes on, da 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 da. Make sure it's all folded in the right way and then of course that should be that way and stuck there. In the last concertina I showed about putting a ribbon round to tie it. I'm not going to do that this time. I've got another idea that I'm going to have a go with. We need to protect the rest of the book, especially if you're anything like me. I'm a bit sort of generous, shall we say, with the glue. Um, so I just slip a bit of newspaper under the first sheet and then I can um, Slap that glue around to my heart's content, knowing that I'm not going to stick all the pages of my book together, which would be quite upsetting. Just go careful here at this edge. Pay real attention to corners and edges because you don't want those peeling off. When you're happy, take that sheet out and put it somewhere safe. And then you can flip it over and just do this by eye and centre it. When you're happy with the position, you can push it down. And we now have the front cover of our book. We then need to do exactly the same at the back. So a clean bit of newspaper to protect everything. Put on some glue. Take out that sticky bit of paper, 
get our other cover, make sure it's the right way up. I am glad I checked that. Just double check. Yeah, that's the right way. And then we can put that in place. And you can see how it covers all the all the bits of that grey board. Now, if you have done all your folds correctly, you will find that the two covers will be in alignment. If you haven't, then they won't. <laughs> and I haven't done mine brilliantly. So you need to make a decision about whether you want the covers to be in line or whether you want the pages to be centered and, and make a bit of a compromise there. When you're happy with how they are, press it down. We then need to put this under a heavy weight, stop any of that glue sticking all my pages together. We put that little bit inside that cover and we could just wrap it round and pop it in there and that will just stop anything sticking. I can now put that under heavy cookery book or if you happen to have a book press of course you can put it under that or if you do lino printing your lino press might be quite good for um, book binding too. Leave that to dry at least a couple of hours ideally overnight and then we'll come back and I'll show you my idea for a closure on it. Okay, the book has pretty much dried. Good to be honest, do with a bit longer, but I'm impatient. <coughs> so we'll take that out. Still looking a little bit warped, so I will need to weight that down. You don't have to have anything to keep it closed. Literally, you can put a rubber band around it if you want. The one I showed you in my first video, I put a, a ribbon round but it. This, I wondered, because I've got a big button, about putting a button here and because it looked kind of gardeny to me using some garden twine that I would fix and then it can wrap round, twist round the button to hold it shut. So making sure I've got it the right way round, I have marked halfway and I've got just a little um, hole punch which I hope is going to be man enough to get through this cover. So just if you haven't got a hole punch like this, you could use just a drill. Right, this is a moment of truth. Oh, I don't think that's going to go. I might end up breaking these. Oh, that's annoying. Right, plan B, because that didn't work. I'm just going to use a an awl to make a hole. That's where the button's going to go. Make two holes. It's not that neat, but that'll be hidden, so it's fine. Very annoying, but perhaps I shouldn't try doing something new while I'm filming for YouTube. <laughs> I have got a big needle, just poke it through. Obviously, if I'd been able to cut the actual thing, I'd have been all right. And I am going to put the button on. Thread it through. And you can see whether my cunning plan works. So we'll have the button, then we'll have that thread, goes round, and then you can twist round there to hold it shut. I don't like the separate bits, so my plan is to put three of these and then just plait them together. There you go. I've Put three threads through, got the tails all roughly even, and then that will go round. So all I have to do now is make sure there's that's loose enough. We don't want that too tight. And then I, I'm going to just plait these together and make a little tassel on the end. Just do an overhand knot to tie those together and I can trim those off even. And I could leave it as a little tassel like that or I could even unravel it a bit and get a better tassel. 
And here we are, one handmade concertina sketchbook with a little fastener that you could use when you're out and about or with that design and with the garden twine it'd be lovely for like a garden journal um, sketching flowers and keeping notes of a, a little nature journal. 